Hello everybody, I am the British Bookworm and today I'm reviewing one of my favourite books to read and research and study on martial arts. So if you're a martial artist, stick around. So there's a lot of books on martial arts um, going back 70s, maybe even the 60s, when there was a lot of mysticism to martial arts, where there were a lot of lies to martial arts. And it's crazy to think that now we're still in a time where there are to some degree still some mystical bullshit about some aspects to martial arts, self-defense, realistic capabilities and I would say that there is no more real a background to analysing, studying, processing and accepting reality is than in the battlefield so soldiers squaddies marines special forces navy seals they are men who are in the front line rangers paras sbs delta force and uh, carry on let's carry on you know but they, they are the guys that literally are on the front line the chances of seeing action is pretty much certain in the majority of uh, deployments and they are risking life and limb on the majority of their specialized missions all the time so when the study, analyse and experience violence. It is about as honest as you'll ever get. And the reason why I'm saying that is this book that I've reviewed for, reviewed, I've read it for many years and it is possibly my second, what I classify as a Bible, it's my second book in martial arts self-defence study and it's one of the books that's given me a lot of confidence because it's a book that I've studied for uh, God, well over 15 years. So what is it? H2H, Hand to Hand Combat. It's just short for Hand to Hand Combat by Greg Thompson and Kid Pallegro. Okay, so in self-defense i'm not going to go on much further than saying there's a lot of bullshit and even as someone myself who is as about as a level-headed as you can possibly be about my own martial art background my own capabilities um i'm very realistic very very educated very well studied and pretty well trained I still have like this extremely realistic opinion about myself as a martial artist and even somebody like myself who literally has dedicated an astronomical amount of time studying martial arts training in martial arts and living it as, a, as a, an experience of as an identity which I don't do as much I don't really see it as an identity anymore but something that was very much part of my life even someone like myself has had critis uh, criticisms by basic basically very ir arrogant uh, uh, trying to find several words at once ignorant idiotic stupid foolish dickheads being, being honest with you, you know, like really what winds me up because I've I've invested, I've had people, which is just the way of personal training, it's the way of martial arts, and it's the gym, and it's, it's the, the general dynamics of life, I suppose, where you get criticisms or, or people will make comments at you about you not having a realistic idea. So what I suppose what I'm trying to say is, no matter how much time and effort and study and training and expertise you put into a subject, you get people who always think that they know better or have a better idea or superiority. And you see this on YouTube when you look at subjects or you see people within certain communities, within the fitness community, 
within within um, all communities you get people who think they know better and they have to speak out they think that they have a superior perspective so basically what I'm saying to you is if you're gonna come at this video with a, an angle like that go and F yourself basically I'm gonna be really blunt go and F yourself you're talking to someone who's invested probably way more time years of training years of studying on a martial arts subject than you will ever 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 do and if you've been you know in competition i still would throw that at you if you've been in the cage i'm gonna still say that to you i don't care who you are what your background is apart from the actual very top professional elite and um, so that's where i'm coming at so this book is possibly one of the best books on the topics that is out there uh, I bought this it's really funny I like buy it when I buy books I tend to buy some books and I think well that's not that great but I'll get around to reading it and this was one of them um, and I started to read this book and I was a bit skeptical but let me go into this quickly Greg Thompson has revolutionized the way the entire American army the entire American army is trained in self-defense this system has been developed to train soldiers to appreciate the true nature of hand-to-hand -hand combat in a battlefield so for anyone who comes at me and says you don't know anything about it as I said I, are you talking to somebody who has literally spent years of his life researching this subject and training in it so if you want to have an attitude because you go to a little UFC club say again go and F yourself right because UFC is not real life these guys study their subject with knives you know with rifles with uh, bayonets with clubs whatever like you know and it's brutal it's unpretty there's no little referee to come in and jump on you when you're being choked out or if you've been stabbed to death and the surprise element is a huge factor in your capabilities when you're in the cage you know what's going on you've got a set of very strict rules regardless of how realistic you think it is it's never going to be this scenario okay so this has come into the american military based on i can't do the story entirely just this but basically they wanted to revitalize the way self-defense or hand-to-hand -hand combat was taught on the smaller scale and basically it became the ranger unit the special forces unit but because it was so good and the way they brought it, it was so it was so good that they made it into the uh, syllabus for the entire american army and how it works is there's various levels of basic movements to understand more the Realistic, realistic grappling element of fighting because most fights become a grappling match and wrestling match and end up on the floor as most people know so it's basically understanding the way a fight is going to look become and be rather than what you want it to be and hand time combat has been put into stages of training so a soldier will be sent out for a two-week training in a full immersion course for two weeks on one level and then the next year they'll be sent out on another two weeks and they'll be brought into a proper martial arts dojo and they'll be battered and shown how brutal fighting is on the rawest form because the human body is the ultimate weapon against another human being ultimately and martial arts in all honesty for the majority of people doesn't give you that much of an advantage as you would like unless it's really blatant uh, as in like the person you are fighting is drunk or clueless on how to fight but anyway so it's an extremely if you're a martial artist it's an extremely good book now one of the things that this book has in it that nobody has done anywhere else 
is each book, uh, sorry, each movement in the book will give you a set of options from each position that's already in the syllabus or in the book. So it'll give you optional techniques from say a full mount or in the side mount <clears throat> and it'll give you ideas so it, when you learn the book you can look at a side mount or side control position and then read the optional techniques and then now you know that from this this position I can look for these these techniques or these transitions and that's one of the reasons why it's so good to show you a few pages some of the movements are very basic but this has been designed to train soldiers at war in Afghanistan in villages or hamlets or little shack areas where someone could jump out from them from behind a bush let's say and all of a sudden they were in a knife fight. This is what this book has been written for. So it's about as real as you can get. Not the pussified western levels of fighting on the street where balances and police turn up the majority of the time. For my opinion on violence, it's barbaric. I don't like it, even though I've invested, as I've already bloated about, you know, I've invested a gigantic amount of time. Um, trying to become a good fighter, trying to be the best I can be and uh, understand violence and become an expert in it really but um, I know that there's no such thing really and one of the things that makes this book so good is what they did um, is or what they have is a policy of debriefing soldiers who've had actually served abroad and been attacked by hand to hand scenarios and they'll ask if their training that they've had at camp worked for them on the battlefield and what actually happened to the absolute finest degree and what techniques did they try how did carrying the rifle affect them how did the body suit, body armour affect them how did the rucksack or webbing affect the fight what kind of results did they have? Did the techniques that they tried work? And if they tried something different, did that work? And then it'll be considered to be put into the syllabus that they train their soldiers. So essentially, it's a scientific laboratory of violence where elite, expert, highly trained, highly skilled, highly dedicated soldiers experience a frontline encounter on the battlefield and when they come back home they get requested to have an interview or debrief on the fight that they had and then they'll analyze the data and they'll say all right so you might maybe they did a new technique or something else worked for them and they'll consider that in for a battlefield scenario of a knife ambush or the kind of general real scenario that they experience so this will get a five out of five on a book review for today greg thompson is one of the very famous ufc battlefield coach who was brought in to analyze how uh, rangers were using it we were training uh, the soldiers for hand time combat and he used very much influenced by Brazilian Jiu Jitsu <clears throat> to understand the real dynamics of a fight rather than using stupid karate techniques that have no practical application whatsoever. So it's an extremely functional book. It would be very valuable to police officers, very valuable to a few friends wanting to learn how to fight, very valuable in, a, in and of itself just a study as a book. If you do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it makes you think more about, okay, what if a knife comes into the scenario? What if weapons are involved? How police may have a little slightly different angle on the subject of self-defense because they've got a pistol or different dynamics that they don't want to necessarily hurt the person that they want to arrest. 
they might not be able to put somebody in a rear naked choke because of the law or because of their district's rules of combat. Um, so many different aspects, but it's an extremely good book with some techniques that are not that commonly taught. In even martial art classes, I would say, um, the fact that they use the military uniforms as a weapon in almost, you know, like choking and uh, certain methods of techniques and some techniques that are less glamorous but really foundational moves for grappling on the ground. There's gaps in the book, there are limits to it, but every Jiu Jitsu book has limits to it because you have to really practice what you, you have to get on the floor and practice with hundreds and hundreds of different types of people before you can really understand, I would say, if you can really get to grips with it, which is a weak area for a lot of people, including me, who are more trained on an academic level for the vast majority of techniques, because most people don't practice a hundred techniques a thousand times. They might train for 20 years and come across techniques that they after hundreds and hundreds of sparring sessions, they may have thrown certain taxi techniques on as a preference, but a book might have, like this, might have a hundred men, who hundred techniques in it. And if we go by the rule that you have to do a technique thousands of times to be good at the technique, then even over the course of ten years, more students have not put that technique on, even several hundred times, never mind thousands of times, unless. That is, they go to say an Eddie Bravo studio or a really good Gracie place where they really practice a technique 40 times each every day when they go there until it's like spawn. But I change, go on and on and on. So, this is an extremely good book. If you're a police officer, uh, if you're in the army, military, highly recommend this book. If you're a military police unit, I highly recommend this book. And if you're in the services, don't assume that your military have the best solution unless you look at the background of their training syllabus and understand that, yeah, they've really gone to town and thought about what they're teaching and keeping it real. So if you'd like this book review, it's all it's all good, it's all gravy. Phantom Combat by Greg Thompson, 5 out of 5, class book, been reading it for 15 years top quality book which will become a bible for you if you're a massive martial art uh, enthusiast and it will give you an appreciation to a different aspect to fighting and it's not just hand to hand bring a knife into the game and your world's just changed for in a terrible way so that's it if you've liked this video give me a like and subscribe Book reviews are meant to be just about the subject matter of the book, but I will also express my own thoughts on the subjects that I'm reviewing because they are also possibly passions that I have. Martial art is one of them. So if you enjoyed this book review, you know what to do. Catch you later.